Hey yo guys, what's up? And welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews. And today we're getting our first impressions of the albums from Girl School, Panzer Christ, Seven Dust, and Signs of the Swarm. So these four new albums dropped today. And we checked them all out. And yeah, you're gonna get our thoughts on them. So I started my day off with Girl School. The album is called WT45 or what the 45 or WTF 45. And he's saying that correctly because there's a question mark at the end of the album title. Yeah, it's kind of a weird way that they phrase it. Um, what the 45? So like, this band's been around for a long time, since the 70s, mid 70s, maybe late 70s-ish around there. Uh, British New Wave kind of thing. Uh, but I've never really got into them. They're, they kind of just fell by the wayside and uh, you know, they did their thing in the background kind of thing. So the album starts and I'm not too blown away. I'm like, this is like okay music, but it's very meh. And honestly, I, I, I got this feeling that like, I kind of already know what this whole thing is gonna sound like. Do I really need to listen to this whole thing? Um, and I almost shut it off. But then I'm glad I didn't because the second song, which is called Cold Dark Heart, is actually a pretty damn good song. It has a really sick riff and it's got a catchy hook. And I was just really into it. Like, I was like, wow, now this has potential. Good, let's go. Let's come on, rest of the album. Unfortunately, the rest of the album gives me the same vibes as the first song did, which again, is not bad, but it just, there was nothing really grabbing me, nothing really to magnetize me towards it. I think there's decent riffs throughout the album, but I feel like it's definitely a product of its time. And I feel like if you're really into old school metal, like that really old school, early, early days of metal, then you probably like this. If that's not your style, or if you've kind of expanded or evolved from that, then it might be hard to tolerate this, but it's good for what it is. So, yeah, you make a good point there. Like, for what you know to expect from this band, it's it's good for that. Yeah. I kind of had a similar experience to you, where the first track came on, I'm just like, okay, whatever, and then Cold Dark Heart came on, I'm like, oh, this is cool. I like the riff, the vocal effect sounds cool, okay, awesome. And then after that, it just kind of just felt like, whatever to me and you know it got me thinking about this question where you know what is the threshold between you know the kind of old old school heavy metal sound and hard rock which yeah. you know if you think about it at the time historically like back then it was the heaviest thing that was out right it was amongst the heaviest yeah but you look at today's standards and things have gotten a lot heavier so then you look at that in i guess a vacuum almost and you think okay like what where's that threshold now you know yeah. We, we've commented on a band like Five Finger Death Punch and said that they've kind of become a little bit more hard rock, but yeah. how, like, what makes them really sound like that? And what oh. makes this band sound old school heavy metal? And maybe a part of it is because this band is from that time, yeah. and that was heavy metal, and they still are that. Yeah, the, e the evolution of music is a tricky thing, right? It is. Because even if you think, if you take hard rock, for example, that's... It's never, it wasn't always as hard as it is now. Yeah. Even rock and roll and hard rock has evolved into harder music. So everything's kind of evolved and it's getting more aggressive and more extreme in a lot of ways. So it is hard to pinpoint exactly what you're listening to. Like, do you call it hard rock now because it sounds more like modern hard rock? Mm -hmm. Or is it still heavy metal because it's true to the heavy metal sound exactly. of the days past? You could probably call it both and be accurate both ways. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just, way, it's an interesting thing that came across my mind when I was listening to this album. But I do think it definitely fits in with the time that this band came from. For sure. Like, for sure. if you like that kind of stuff, you like that. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, which I thought was funny, uh, the guitar slides that happened in Believing in You were giving me flashbacks to When the World Becomes Undone by a pill horse named Death. If you remember when oh, we yeah. checked that album out, there so was many guitar slides. So many of the same guitar slides. <laughs> so I was hearing on this song like, no, not again, I no. Forgot, I forgot about that. Um, so that was pretty funny. But yeah, overall, like if you're into that style of old school heavy metal, then this is the album for you. Yeah. If not, then probably not. skip. Yeah. Uh, Last of a Kind by Panzer Christ. So this is a band that's new to me. I don't know if you've checked them out before. I've heard the name, but that's it. There's another band with a similar name. I think they're called Panzer Faust or Panzer Faust, which some people might get the mix up. I might be saying that name wrong as well. They should tour together. <laughs> oh, wow, what a tour. Double Panzer. Uh, yeah, Panzer Squared. Um, the Panzer Audi Tour. This band is, um, it sounded like black metal to me. 
to be fair, said death metal, so we looked it up and they're black and death metal. <laughs> yeah, like at first I was thinking death metal, and then as it was going, I'm like, this has a lot of blackened elements, so it's yeah. like black and death metal. It's kind of both. Um, so, I mean, I like this style of music. It, it'll never go wrong in my eyes. Mm -hmm. The problem with it is, is there's nothing inspiring about it. There's nothing about it that makes me go, holy crap, that's awesome, I gotta add that to the playlist. Because it's pretty much walls of blast beats, um, the same kind of harsh black metal vocal, and that gets really tedious after a while when you're really trying to find unique things to write about and things to say on a review, right? So that's the biggest downfall for me. I could listen to the whole album, it's eight tracks, 45 minutes long, and enjoy the whole thing. Track number four stood out the most, it's called The Fires on Gallows Hill, but it's only a minute and 40 seconds long. Yeah. It's practically, it's, I mean, it's interlude length, but it's actually a song. Uh, it sounded really evil. It had this really cool, just darkness to it. I mean, the whole album sounds dark, but why couldn't this be normal song length? Like, <laughs> why couldn't it be normal song length? And like the song right after is like a seven or eight minute song or something. Exactly. So it's a little bit weird that way. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it lacks inspiration. And you know what? That's honestly, a lot of genres have a lot of bands that kind of fall into this pocket where they just do the run-of-the-mill stuff to record an album. Do the run-of-the-mill stuff. We're always looking for bands and albums that are going that extra mile and taking that extra step and sounding a little bit different here and there because that's that gives us stuff to write about. It gives us stuff to talk about and stuff to be excited about. Mm -hmm. This album was good, but had nothing like that for me in it. Yeah, it's it's the kind of case where it's like you the band obviously knows their audience and for reference, this is the band's first album in ten years. Oh, is it? Wow. So it's been a while since uh, one of their records, and at first I really wasn't feeling it. I'm thinking this is just like wall of sound death metal, like whatever. But as I listened more, maybe I started to adjust to it more because considering all four of these albums sound pretty different from each other. Like, yeah, you yeah. listen to one, you go to the next one, and it's a jump. So your contrast, your yeah. ears and your mind are going to have to adjust to what you're hearing. You go, you know, for example, if you're going to go from girl's school to Panzer Christ, like, that's a jump. Yeah. So I think it took a few songs for that to happen with me, for me to adjust. And I started to like it a lot more. I started to notice cool riffs, cool ideas. I like the spookiness of this album, some of the sound effects they use, the organ that's used. I like that, and it gives like this kind of grim um, atmosphere to the album. It makes you wish the album was released in October. <laughs> yeah, it, it would be fitting. Um, but my name is Lucifer. Like this, this is earlier on, and it almost builds up to something interesting in the bridge, and then goes to the wall of sound riffs. I'm like, okay. Well, what the heck? But I will say that chorus and the riff is pretty neat. Um, for reference, I didn't listen to this after Girl School. I did start with Girl School, but then I went to Seven Dust and then went to this. It's okay. it's still a jump regardless, just yeah. making that clear. Um, the Devil's Whore starts off with these sounds and then fades off as if fades out as if it like the track is over. And then the track starts. I don't know if you thought that was weird. I thought that was a little weird. I honestly didn't even catch it, to be honest. It's, I, I feel like things flow in the sense of, like, you're not sure if something is a transitional, like, interlude track or not. I think stuff like that's done intentionally to create a, a feeling of almost upheaval, like uneasiness, right? You don't really know what to expect. The listener's kind of, like, gets thrown off. Yeah. Like, which you did. At that, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it, done, it worked. It's done deliberately. They did it. Um, I, I, was, I was thinking as I was writing this like all my notes, I'm thinking that this band kind of falls in line similar to maybe like Napalm Death or Goat Whore. That's, well, I mean more blackened than them, but I feel yeah. like it's kind of the death metal aspect is similar to those bands. I'd say. Maybe, yeah. But um, the tremolo that's going on in Baptized in Piss was really nice. <laughs> and what I, a song name. What, what a song name. But <laughs> that I one. whose piss it is. Is it the priest's piss? Is it like a concoction of multiple people's piss? All together, the piss of God. Jesus piss. Maybe it's a nun piss. Tell us in the comments below whose piss is that. Piss is who's it? getting <laughs> baptized in piss, and whose piss does it belong to? Um, um, but yeah, fun. that song I actually enjoyed. Um, and like as the album went on, I started to enjoy it more and more, which was surprising to be honest. I wasn't expecting it to kind of start off like mm, I don't know, it's yeah. kind of like whatever, and then I actually start to pick out stuff. As it goes, because normally what tends to happen, we, we pick an album to review, and then that stuff starts showing up throughout the week. Yeah. So the fact that this happened just on a first listen was, was pretty cool. Yeah. 
All right, so on to Seven Dust. Uh, Truth Killer is the name of their new album. I don't know when the last time they put an album out. Uh, I don't really follow the band, but I the only song I really know is Denial. It's their biggest hit, 2001, 2002-ish, that song dropped. And it's easily by far their biggest hit. I'm sure a lot of people can will relate and say, oh, that's the only song I know. <laughs> uh, but then there's probably a lot of people that do follow this band because I know they have a pretty good fan base. When was the last time they put out an album? I don't know. I didn't I, check. I, I didn't check that but one. But this is the first time I've heard about them in a long time. Yeah. So I haven't heard about this band in at least a decade, if not more. That's just kind of happening this year. We're seeing multiple old school, early 2000s new metal bands just dropping albums. There's a huge surge of early 2000s new metal bands dropping albums. Like, like we got this, there was Godsmack earlier on. I think Taproot is dropping Taproot, something. Nonpoint, Static Non-point. X has got an album coming up, but then again, they've been relevant lately. This, yeah, because they um, dropped the first one like a few years ago, the double. There, there was a whole bunch. I actually made a list because there was a bunch. There was like almost 10 of them, I think. Yeah. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Finger 11. The big finger 11. Yeah, like yeah. that's a, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we're seeing a big wave right now, and they're, and this band's part of it. This is part of it. So the album starts off, uh, I Might Let the Devil Win. And Did he win? It's our R&B. So I'm like, okay, I, I see what's going on here. But again, I'm ignorant to the discography of this band. Okay, I don't know. Maybe this is something they've done before. Maybe this is a part of their style. But it's nothing like anything I've ever heard from them. So I thought, are they kind of going the sleep token route here and kind of trying to ride that wave. If so, maybe cool, we'll see what happens. Um, it does pick up and get a little bit heavier, a la sleep token as well. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I shouldn't be referencing sleep token, but that's the vibe I was getting from I it. I mean, the, that first track definitely as well, like to me, it kind of just sounded like a worse version of Chokehold. To the worst <laughs> version. Like, yeah. I love Chokehold, I love that song to yeah. death. This like reminded me a lot of it, but just not as good. Yeah, so, um, this album didn't really do much for me at all. The only track that really stood out to me at all was number five called No Revolution. And my note literally says, it kind of stands out, but meh. That's my note. Because <laughs> I was like, I was listening to the album and then I, my ears kind of perked up when this song was on. And I went, okay, this is finally something I'm getting into. I'm enjoying this, I'm enjoying this, but like, what do I like about it? And then the song kind of started going downhill. And I'm like, this actually is not anything that special. Like what? about it even piqued my interest in the first place i don't know uh this is not for me this is like you know i i try to think if i was still 12 13 14 that new metal age when that new metal was fresh that's how old it was mm -hmm. would i like it at that age and i don't think i would which is probably telling because i didn't really like seven dust that much when i was that age so I think maybe this is just not a band for me, so mm -hmm. maybe my opinion on it is not the fairest, but yeah, this whole album was kind of just, it felt like a waste of time for me, and I, I just feel bad saying that, but I got nothing good to say about it. That's fair enough. <laughs> I mean, for, for me, that first track kind of threw me off a little bit, because I'm like, at first, I'm like, are they going to bring me the horizon direction? And I'm like, okay, this is sounding more like Sleep Token, but not as good. And then the second track, it, which was the title track, I believe, um, felt like a direct upgrade from that. Like, that first track kind of felt like an anomaly on this album. Like, the rest of the tracks don't sound as much, you know, kind of R&B or poppy as um, as uh, the first track. So, you know, I felt like, okay, this is kind of what they're going with. And I felt like this album had moments and a few songs that were good. Mm -hmm. Like, there were some aspects like, oh, that's a cool riff or that's a nice melody or, hey, this song is good. Uh, no Revolution is one of them. Um... And won't stop the bleeding. I liked that riff a lot. That that one, I was jamming out to that one. That one was good. And that's what I'm talking about. Like a few things here and there, but in the latter half of the album, I feel like I heard everything already. Mm -hmm. Like by the time I'm in the second half, I feel like this album was not giving me anything new. There was nothing new to offer yeah. from, from this album, with the exception of Fence. But the thing with Fence is that it comes the the track right before Fence is the closer. Right before Fence is a track that kind of logically feels like the ending of the album. So to me, even though Fence is the end of the album, it felt like a bonus track. It's the kind of thing that, it's got the bonus track feeling, like, okay, it's over, here's this extra thing that's kind of disconnected from the album experience. That's how it felt for me. And I'm like, okay, this track was probably a single because the verses sound old school new metal, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, okay, but that's just like, almost false advertising because the rest of the album doesn't sound like that. Yeah. And it's got hard stuff and good breakdowns here and there too. It's not like it doesn't have that at all. It's just it doesn't sound the same way that Fence does with the old school 
you know, kind of aggressive sound. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't hate this album. I do think it's a bit too long. It's 49 minutes. I don't think it needs to be that long. You could probably cut like two tracks, maybe. Maybe three, I don't know. I mean, 49 minutes isn't that long for an album, it's but for not, an album that sounds like this, it feels long. For this album. Yeah. I feel like this specific album could be shorter. Yeah. But it's not like I hated it, and there were moments and tracks that I did enjoy. So it's like, it's all right, I guess, for me. Fair enough. Uh, amongst the low and empty, most likely the album most people clicked on the video for, Signs of the Swarm. I was looking forward to this, because we liked... I remember we both enjoyed the singles that we heard. I remember I enjoyed one of them a lot. Uh, the other two, I'm not sure if I liked them as much, but yeah, we were pretty hyped for this like, album. Like, we yeah, were, like, we were looking forward to it. I came into this like, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to this, this is going to be good. And it's funny that just the album just starts with a breakdown. <laughs> it just You walk right into that one. But then the ending of the title track sounds like a construction site. And I sat there. This is one of the ones we reacted to, right? This is the this is the song that people said, oh, it sounds like Lauren Shore because of the... Was that, it the title track? It was, yeah, the vocal part. Because I remember that double bass. That double bass yeah, little yeah. hammer drill. And it's like... <laughs> and hearing, whatever that is. It, it's been a while since I heard it. And hearing it just the double bass alone, it's like, okay, this is incredible technique. Like, it's yeah. hard to do that. But at the same time, it feels like they're doing it just for the sake of doing it. And it's like, I'm sitting there thinking, like, someone's got a power drill on somewhere. I'm at a construction site. It's summer in Canada, so you know that's exactly <laughs> what you're going to be hearing outside all the time. They're just putting on uh, signs of the swarm. So, um, yeah, that that was kind of bugging me. But overall, I was kind of finding this album had small, like, gem moments in it. So the syncopation in Tower of Torsos, another one we reacted to with a really cool video, if I recall correctly. Um, I enjoyed that a lot, and I was finding that kind of thing throughout the album. Like, oh, this song's got a cool moment here, and that song has a cool moment there, but it's all still kind of surrounded by what you would know from modern deathcore. Like, think of the modern deathcore sound, that is the majority of this album. Yeah. And I was getting to a point where it's like, okay, they have a cool idea here, and then they just do the deathcore stuff again. The intro of Shackles Like Talons, super cool. Felt like this was building up to a really cool, interesting pace breaker, and then it goes back to what I've been hearing for the rest of the album. And I'm just like, of course. Um, the melodic part of Dream Killer, I thought that was cool. And I feel like those kinds of ideas need to be expanded on in this album. And I feel like if they were, this album would be great. Because yeah. then all the songs would have their own identity and character to them, but while still being deathcore songs. For example, an album like the new Up Sulphur album, which we did review, does that. It yeah. still sounds like deathcore, but all the songs have their own kind of character to them. Yeah. They stand out, they got unique parts, features, this and that. There is a feature from Matt Heafy on this song, I didn't even notice it, to be honest, because I was just thinking, like, I man... I noticed it a bit, but... Yeah, it wasn't huge, a standout difference, majorly, or anything, but... Mm -hmm. And then, so, I, I feel like, one thing I noticed, kind of, when finishing this album, is that I feel like it might be best in small doses. Listening to these songs, just one song on its own, is probably going to sound really cool. And you'll be like, yeah, this is cool. The syncopation, the rah, crazy aggressive. But then when you listen to all of them together, you start to find a lot of repetition in that. And that might be why we enjoyed the singles the way we did. Because it was Maybe. just one track at a time. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, I, I do agree with a lot of things you say. And I find something interesting. As different as these four albums are... They all share something in common, and that is I think that these bands are just really playing it safe. They're not really going outside their comfort zone. They're just doing uh, you know, very genre-specific things and riding their comfort wave from beginning to end, essentially. I mean, considering Seven Dust, we don't really know the history with that band we super don't. well, so they could have experimented there. I, 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 I would doubt that they sounded like this back in the day. You know what I mean? Well, if you listen to Denial, like Denial... Admittedly, I don't really know them very well. I knew of them, but I never listened to them. If so. you heard Denial, you'll probably go, oh, that song. You probably, mm -hmm. probably heard it. Um, but it's not a far it's not a far cry from that. Like what okay. I heard on this album today, it's not a far cry from So it's like, their sound hasn't changed drastically, except the R&B thing threw me off a bit. But even still, I still think as an album as a whole, they still played this kind of safe route and didn't really do much craziness with it. But anyways, we moved on from that. Signs of the Swarm. So yes, the double bass on this album can you call it a highlight? I would call it a highlight because yeah. it's impressive. It's, it's, it's impressive and it's, it's it, so it kind of makes you go, holy shit, what the fuck? But it, over and over and over again, literally every song has this blazing double fast bass. The best use of it is in track number six, Shackles Like Talons, because 
they actually use it as part of the rhythmic pattern of, I don't know if it's the whole song or just part of the verses or whatever. I didn't really gauge how much it was used, but it was used in a really good way. And I went, holy crap, they're actually doing something with it. This is awesome. But in other songs, it's kind of just like spurts here and there, right? And it's like, okay, we get it. We, we get it. You're, you can do it. Cool. Um, one thing I find kind of funny is uh, Amongst the Low and Empty, the title track, I remember we said, you know, people were saying it sounds like Lorna Shore because he does a bit of the zombie noises at the end, the you know, the animal noises or whatever. We we disagree with that, but people were saying that. Um, I I think that's more infant annihilator if I'm gonna if you're gonna give a reference point to uh, where credit is due, I would say give it to Dickie. Um, and the the funny thing is, the double bass stylings of this album also harkens back to Infinite Annihilator. It maybe goes back further to another band, but that's where I first noticed uh, double bass like that. Like, it's basically like drumming that sounds inhuman. Like, you almost can't picture a person doing it, mm -hmm. but there's techniques out there that let you do it, and it's crazy. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, the Witch Beckons is the song with Matt Heafy on it. Again, one of my notes on this song is more crazy double bass. Um, but Matt's feature was nice. Uh, it's, it's, he does a vocal appearance. He probably has some guitar in there as well. It's hard to really tell exactly. But the fact that you hear a different voice uh, made this song sound fresher than the others. So that stood up. It br breaks up the vocals a bit. Um, overall, pretty solid track. And probably the highlight of the album for me. But... Like TV Fish, all these songs have a very similar vibe to them, and um, other than that feature track, none of them really stand out at all. And that's a shame because we were pretty hyped for it. Yeah. And you know, I, I thought this was going to be more like you know what I was expecting when I w went into this. Um, that Fit Part Autopsy album that came out a year or so ago. Oh, what the future! Oh, holds. what the future holds! Yeah, that's a sick album. It is. And for some reason, I thought this was going to be like that like that or at least give me the same feelings that that gave me that's the kind of hype i went into this with and i was pretty disappointed that i didn't get that so if you're a deathcore fan and you like just deathcore then you'll like the album we like deathcore the album is not bad mm -hmm. but again as reviewers as people who are on this channel trying to give you guys good things to look for in albums it's really hard when they're just doing the same kinds of things over and over again are these talented musicians absolutely absolutely um, are they, are the songs well written? Is the album well produced? Yeah, sure. But there's just nothing special there. At least on a first it, couple it's, listens. It's so. few and far between. And I, like I said, I, I feel like if they expanded on some of the small ideas they had in there, it would make the songs a lot more interesting. That's yeah, true. So, out of these four albums, we talked about this before we started recording this video, and we don't really feel up to reviewing any of them. But, we are going to check out actually a potential hidden gem, an album that we came across a week or so ago. Yeah, and I can't remember. Do you know when it came out? It came out in February. It's, it been, it's February. been out for a month at this point. Bile found it and said that it would be a crime if he hid it from me. Yeah, he showed it to me. I listened to it, and we both feel it's definitely worth reviewing. This album is called Visions of Infinity by Carnosis. So that's what we're going to be reviewing throughout the week. Guys, check it out if you can, because it's certainly something special. And we'll be back next week to give you guys our full and final review of that album, so be sure to come back next week to see our thoughts. But that's it for this video, guys, so leave your thoughts down below and let us know what you think of all these new releases and these bands, and answer the question about Baptized and Piss, because I'm really curious to know <laughs> what kind of <laughs> things you guys will come up with there. Um, but that's it, guys. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm Vile Self. I'm TV Fish. We'll see you guys on the next one.